Alright, I'm here with uh, Kane, Kane Anfari, ahead of uh, November the 23rd against Mohamed Wasiru from Ghana. A 10 round international bout. Uh, Kane, how are you feeling firstly? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me, Aiden, um, for coming all this way. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling great. The training camp has been good, hard, tough. Um, been doing all the work, just have to execute the 23rd of November. After you got rid of the last opponent, you were calling on social media for an international opponent and they brought you an undefeated Ghanaian, 14-0, 13 wins by way of knockout. Uh, what do you think about uh, Mohamed? No, look, like they say, he's a KO sensation. Um, I'm ready for the, for the task. Can't wait to get in there and just like the, the thought of it, like almost 100% KO ratio makes me work harder every day. I'd say to myself, 14 fights or 13 fights, 12 KOs, I have to work harder. And yeah, I can't wait to put another KO maybe on my record. I mean, how do you approach the fights against uh, another knockout puncher? No, look, I mean, like I say to anyone, like with the 8-ounce glove, anyone can hit hard. Um, everyone is tough. I like tough fighters. Um, I like to see their face once a, a soft guy goes in there, make a tough guy like soft with his eyes. But um, yeah, two hard punches go, each, go at each other. It's the one who can take the best punch basically at the end of the day. So. We'll see, what I, we'll see what he does when I hit him and what I do if he hits me. So, 23rd of November, must see. Have you gone through his record to see like some of his previous opponents, what he's come up against? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he isn't the best of best opponents, but um, I mean, yeah, he almost has like a 100% KO ratio, so he must hit hard somehow. So, yeah, but not the best like me and my resume. I mean, I've, been, I've beaten a former world champion, best amateur fighters there were in South Africa. So... For me, going up against him, I feel like I have it, and um, yeah, God willingly, it goes good. This is uh, Ghana versus South Africa. The first time that you'll be fighting someone from Ghana, uh, what's your thoughts on that? No, like, I mean, it's always nice to take out the best out of each nation and just like, you know, fight them, win them, and then just take it from there. You do hold the IBF Africa title, which obviously you're going to be looking forward to maybe getting some further up the ratings in the future. Uh, did you want to defend your title or are you happy with the 10 round non-title uh, non fight? Yeah, look, so I said to Uncle Colin that I won an international fight, so they either was going to bring a Philippines guy or uh, wherever. So for me, defending a, a title doesn't mean like I have to defend it. At least I have the title. So if I can defend it maybe once more after this, it's fine. But um, I'm happy with this fight. I mean, we're going against a, a good guy, 100% um, win ratio also. So for me, it's nice. I just do whatever they say and I fight who's, who's in front of me, so yeah. Ever since that time uh, where you got elevated to the main event, you've only ever seen that main event slot, um, still representing at the top. Obviously there is a good undercard as well. Uh, what do you think of the bill as a whole? No, very good bill. I mean, all the young guys like Ishmael is co-maining, I think, eh? Yeah, yes. Um, Josh Feltman, Deron, I've seen him there at Apex, and also my boy Luke Hendricks, he's also on there, I'm glad for him. Be sorting out his boxing stuff with Boxing SA, so at least he's coming on there. And um, I can't wait, so it's going to be a very nice bill with all of us. And then, lucky enough, I'm main, main carding it, so yeah, for me, it's good. I wanted to talk about that time where we sat down um, in, uh, I think it was Rosebank, and we had the meeting about what's your career looking like, how many fights you're going to get this year. So far, the targets are being hit uh, as regards to no doubt management side. Um, how have you felt uh, throughout the whole ordeal? No, good. I mean, like I said, like, me, Ulkert, and Uncle Colin has a plan for, for the two years. Almost the year, first year is done now. And um, I think I have to win this one. And the next year, I, I think I'm ready for, for overseas. Maybe, you know, um, Uncle Colin can keep me on the Japan undercard with um, Kofu with them. So, I mean, it can't be that hard, I think. So maybe I must win this one. I'll do it in good fashion. He mustn't worry. I told him it's fun. Leave it to me. And um, yeah, maybe undercard Kofu with them in Japan. I want the guy that's ninth. I think it's Ishiro or something. In, in the world, so I want him also on the undercard at Japan. I mean, you see uh, Pumalela Kafu, I think he had I think 14 fights and he's, he, you know, he achieved his, his dream of becoming mm -hmm. a WBO world champion. In your division, maybe slightly a little bit more stacked, but you mentioned fighting number nine in the world. Um, do you feel like you're ready for that step now? Definitely, I feel, uh, I feel more um, matured, um, my coach also said to me. And um, look, if, if Coach G says I'm, I'm right for it, I can go. I mean, he's still like my main main guy, like my trainer, manager, Uncle Colin is co-managing me. So, for if all of them can sit together and say, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, because I know deep down in my heart, I'm ready. I can sort them out. I mean, we've seen with the guys that's fighting overseas. Once they fight a guy they can fight, they get exposed. Like for Scott Field, yeah. it's the same there. Like if they have, if they fight a the guy they can fight a bit, they get exposed. So I'm ready.
And let's talk about peaking in careers as well. Um, do you know? Do you think that you that you've already got to the point there where you where you feel like you're in the best version, or do you think you know you still got a long way to go? No, definitely. I mean, like I said, um, you learn every day in the boxing. Um, there's not one day that goes past like I, st- I think like okay, I know everything. I learn every day. Um, I'm still maturing every day, and I can still learn a lot. I think so. Um, but for now, I think where I am now at this place, I've got power, I've got speed, I've got skill. Um, yeah, I just think I'm ready for the people overseas. Top 20, top 15 in the world, I'm ready for them. Perfect. And then uh, just going back to the man from Ghana, Mohammed uh, Wasiru, uh, do you think he poses any threats to you? Um, not actually. I mean, this is what we do for a living. So you can't go in with a mindset like, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose by knockout or whatever. I feel like I'm confident enough to feel like I can beat him. Um, four rounds maybe, I'll say. But I'm confident enough, I'm training hard, I'm doing all my stuff, and yeah, I can't wait. What's changed uh, in your boxing ability? Because when you, when you first started off, you know, it was a, you know, a grind, and you maybe got some dodgy decisions uh, with mm. the draws, but you seem to be going on this knockout streak. Uh, is there anything different that happened in that course of time? No, nothing. I mean, like I said, I just matured a bit. Um, because when I was fighting in my first three or four fights, I was like walking on 62, 63, so I cut like two kilos. Now I've cut a lot more, so walking on 70, 71, so I'm a big, big lightweight as well. So for me, yeah, just training hard, listening to Coach G and um, suffering, suffering alone. I mean, it's a, it's a lonely, lonely sport, this, and um, yeah, crying nights, alone nights, so for me, it's going good so far. And, and the one thing that Coach G hasn't done is he hasn't expanded his stable, you know, based on, on yours and Sean Portkitz's results. You know, he's kept it relatively quiet. He's added Tristan Nadu there as well. I see you guys on social media. You, you're always hanging out together, always training together, motivating each other. What's, uh, are you guys friends and outside of the ring? Definitely. We're friends. Um, like, like when he joined us, I told him it's going to be a tough, like tough games. The training is hard. And then after a week or two, he told me, hey, this is different. Like, I mean... Yeah, it's never been training so hard and stuff like, but I give it to him, like he sticked around now, now he's with us, um, doing all the stuff. Um, yeah, and we're friends, he's helping with my social media followers, all that stuff, so, and if I can help him in the boxing world, I'll take it, so we give like a one-one, it's a win-win situation, so, yeah, it's, he's a good guy, I mean, um, nothing like, how can I say, um, he's just a good guy, man, yeah. Tristan is a good guy. He's also involved in his own boxing tournament, but I'll do an interview with him and catch up with him about that. Your side of things, you guys are both lightweights. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're about 71, 72 kilograms walking around now. Have you ever considered moving up in weight, maybe in the future? No, maybe not right now. Yeah, maybe not now. Um, I still make weight comfortably. Um, maybe two years, I think, two, three years. Maybe I'll go up to Junior Walter, demolish that weight, and then maybe go up to Walter demolish that weight maybe go up again we'll see because I'm still growing yeah. and I'm still like yeah I'm, I'm big so but now lightweight is my it's my weight division okay 100% do you have a message uh, for Mohamed Wasiru before you step in the ring with him no I'm just like train hard um, good luck and yeah can't wait for 23rd of November it's going to be a war it's going to be a dog war and um, I know how to bite and I know how to bark as well so yeah can't wait I hope you train good and God bless you. And then uh, before you before you step in the ring, do you want anyone do you want to thank any shout outs? Yeah, just all my sponsors, uh, Toshiba, Universal Paints, Sports RX, uh, TWH, Bridging Financing, Financing, um, Highway Park Homes. Who am I missing? Um, if I miss someone, sorry. But um, yeah, all the sponsors, all the people behind me, my mom, dad, my brother, they're my biggest supporters. Um, and Coach G also, and to you Aiden for coming all the way, doing the interview. Thank you so much.